demos at the booth, we're showing off Project Cassini. Project Cassini is all about enabling software leverage and scale for all of those A-class devices that are, uh, that are out there. ARM has shipped billions and billions of devices. The IoT runs on ARM. One of the biggest challenges with that is that there's so many diverse pieces of hardware, and what Project Cassini does is it allows software to easily be ported and land on multiple different platforms. Um, specifically, you can take a Linux distribution and run it on over 25 different boards now, and that number is growing rapidly. I'm going to hand it over to Sebastian, who's going to tell you guys a little bit more. So, this demo, um, like Mohammed said, is about our project Cassini, which has got multiple facets. Uh, one part of it is ARM System Ready, which is a certification. Can you hold the, the mic closer to you? Yep. Maybe, yeah, like this. You can just hold it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're, sh we're showcasing System Ready, which is our certification uh, scheme for firmware and boards to make sure that they boot standard uh, operating systems. I've got USB sticks in my hand, one with Fedora and one with uh, Debian, um, and I can plug them into a development board. We'll pick this Coral, for example. I can plug it in, and I can go over. Um, And we'll go over to the Coral, open up a serial terminal, reset the board, and you'll see in a moment that it will reboot and boot a completely generic operating system. And the same USB stick can be used across any of these boards, which are running different uh, from different OEMs, running different uh, SOCs from different silicon vendors. Sorry, one second. Oh, there we go. And in a minute, that will boot up to, to just a regular operating system, which allows you to not have to worry about uh, managing updates or anything like that. You can, you can pass that on to your uh, operating system vendor. So when you say ARM and partners, so yeah. who are the partners, for example? Yeah, I mean, it's important to say that this, this particular uh, demo, we worked really closely, obviously, with Foundries I.O. to make this thing happen. Um, they're an integral part of it. And what I love about Foundries I.O. is that they, you know, they've identified and they're working on the exact problem that Project Cassini is looking to solve, and which is why we partnered together to kind of enable this. On the hardware side, we've got, we're showing you a rock chip board, we're showing you NXP boards, we're showing you a board from Broadcom with a Raspberry Pi, um, you know, and we've got uh, Coral, which is the, the Google development board. Um, we've got an Arduino over there. So it's a whole ecosystem, and, and you know, that's the strength of ARM, and I love the fact that we've all kind of come together to make it happen. Um, is this like a groundbreaking way of getting things streamlined now? Because the whole idea of ARM is yeah. is a common architecture for everybody to develop for. And now it's just the next level somehow? Yeah, I mean, the way to think about it, right, is it, you, know, you walk around the show and you see all these devices that are based on ARM. The strength of ARM is the ecosystem. There's billions and billions of devices. We've shipped over 230 billion devices, and there are lots of different, um, lots of different devices designed by lots of different um, uh, partners to for specific use cases. That's the strength. It's also the challenge because it means software has to be de developed as a bespoke thing for every one of those devices. What this solves is it allows you to take the head of the tree and just use the Linux distribution that is at the top of the tree and just boot it. And that is such a powerful thing because now all that software development can focus on innovation. And um, security updates crucial for the IoT world. That's right. And this means in theory, it could be like 20, 30 years support now. Well, yeah, and, and if, you can, if you can grab the head of the tree, just think about what that means. As those security uh, issues get patched at the, um, at the head of the tree, you can now just download the, the newest version and drop, drop them on. It makes maintenance and, uh, and, um, and serviceability for all those devices in the field that much easier. It's really about, and, and, and frankly, it's consistent with everything that we're working on right now. It's really about you know, streamlining that development experience and enabling folks to get to market more quickly, whether it be software developers, hardware developers, or otherwise, or OEMs. How do you, how do you decide what platforms become part of Project Cassini? Is it everything it, can just join? It's, it's, uh, it's an open, it's an open um, you know, it's an open, uh, uh, I don't want to call it a standard, but it's an open um, uh, project, which means that lots of different partners are in line, and you know, we've got a backlog of different boards, we've got 25 through, there's a certification program that you go through with System Ready, and once you've done that, and by supporting the Parsec um, software APIs, you're off you go. All right, and uh, what else we can talk about here? Should we walk yeah. around? Yeah, let's let's uh, let's let's sneak over here. Let me show you. Uh, let me let, let me uh, let me show you this because I think this is a really cool one as well. 
you know, one of the one of the strengths of ARM is that it uh, it's obviously very power efficient as an architecture. But beyond that, there are architectural changes where you know compute and technology is moving closer to the edge, and that that is actually decarbonizing compute and making for more sustainable compute around the world. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Zach, who's going to take you through uh, through a couple of examples of how you know thinking about the architecture in different ways, and ARM is doing this with the, our partners. We're actually pulling and, and decarbonizing uh, uh, compute. Thank you. Yeah, so we have a couple different use cases that we can showcase. Most aptly for embedded world, we can talk about the smart security use case. So this is analyzing the carbon efficiency of two different implementations of ARM technology. One with a smart camera. So let's say you have 50 cameras at a security facility and you want to track every night to see if um, only allowable personnel are allowed inside. So this is a smart camera, tracking people, doing facial recognition, doing all of that compute at the edge. Doesn't need to do any data transmission up to the cloud unless there's an error detected. The other product we can compare using the same transmission of Wi-Fi is a passive camera. So this is now streaming data. It has to stream up to the cloud to do the compute up there. So it takes a lot more power to do that transmission time. And just comparing the carbon footprint quantifying the amount of carbon over one year of time running every single night between these two use cases at a facility, you can see specifically the difference. Now, a smart camera uses a little bit more energy at the edge than the passive camera, but that's far outweighed by not having to transmit and stream data up to the cloud, do the computation there, and back. And you can see some real world equivalencies of what this can translate to and the meaning that this um, can impact the world with. So as a huge ARM fanboy, I always thought kind of like ARM needs to become a mandatory because of everybody's talking about green and you use much less power than some of the other architectures. But this is like the next level of using AI even better to optimize everything? Yeah, it all builds on top of it, right? So there's the energy efficiency inherent with ARM and you you supercharge that with the AI efficiencies at the edge and you can we're starting to quantify it for the first time and see the amount of carbon savings so it's exciting it's a time. big deal like governments everybody's interested right absolutely yeah, yeah you know it's uh, it's it's a really interesting um, it's a really interesting you know um, when, you, when you think about it you know as the world continues to evolve we continue to put more and more technology on the edge more and more compute on the edge you know we can start to to, to do things in, in this sort of more efficient way. So in some cases that means ML, sometimes that means more you know, efficient compute just in general, and sometimes that just means pushing more and more intelligence to the edge. It's a great nice. example, and frankly, it's something that we're uh, also working on. If we turn around, we actually have our, our, uh, our ARM Total Solutions are really focused on similar sort of things. ARM Total Solutions is really made up of, of three things. Um, it starts off with, uh, you know, it, why don't we get the, uh, the image up here for show show people. Um, it's really made of three things. First, it starts with ARM Corestone. ARM Corestone are our pre-integrated, pre-verified reference platforms. So these are bundles of IP which we've pre-integrated and handed off to our ecosystem so that our ecosystem can take them and quickly adopt them. That means our silicon partners can just take them and tape them out. They can modify them if they like, but they're ready to go. Vastly accelerating their time to market. So that's the first part, and you can see that kind of outlined here. At the same time as we release that IP with those pre-integrated, pre-verified solutions, we create a virtual hardware, a virtual replica of that, and we put that in the cloud, and you can access that at avh.arm.com. So that means that software developers can immediately log in and start working on software for our newest IP the day that we release it. It also means that they can now do things like CI, CD without having to build massive hardware farms. And then finally, we've got our reference software and our, and our standards, which allow for easy portability of software across lots of different devices. Our focus with ARM Solutions for IoT is a lot of that intelligence, putting a lot of that intelligence on the edge. Um, and our first ones are with our newest uh, processor, the M85, uh, which, uh, which also uses a, in that, in that total solution, also uses our U55 NPU to create a, a really a very um, highly performant ML uh, edge-based platform, which is great for things like the smart care. Uh, smart camera use case that Zach was telling you about earlier. Is, is it something that came over a little bit with Linaro, the development of these testing in the cloud kind of systems? You know, what we found was that, um, you know, when, uh, when, when we started down this journey, 
what we found when we talked to some of our most sophisticated partners is that they actually, um, some of our most sophisticated partners were actually already doing this. They were, they were taking our very sophisticated modeling technology, licensing it in-house, and setting up CI, CD flows. We know that um, you know, uh, folks like Google TensorFlow, the TensorFlow uh, Lite project actually uses ARM virtual hardware to enable that CI, CD. And so what we ended up doing is we said, hey, you know, if, if the most sophisticated partners are doing that, how do we enable that and make that widely available to all of our other partners and make that, uh, democratize that for everybody, which is how ARM virtual hardware came about. Nice. And uh, are there lots of cool news here at the Embedded World with ARM? You know, I, it's... <coughs> There's a lot of cool news here at, uh, at, it, at Embedded World with ARM. In fact, walking around, everything I, you know, it, I think every single booth has, uh, has some element of ARM technology in it. Uh, like when I, uh, for example, just here, I look at the ARM Cortex M55, the ETHOS U55, some of the cutting edge ARM chips here. Yeah, so this is one of our, um, so this is one of our partners, LF Semiconductor, and, and you know, they've got an incredible platform that uses our Cortex M55 as well as our Ethos U55 processor. So it's an AI chip. They've got some really cool demos around it. Um, you know, this is the first instan instantiation. They were first to market with the M55, U55 as a, as a solution. You know, and, they, and they're actually building out a complete platform that includes, um, you know, Cortex A32 on it as well as part of that platform. Uh, and, and all the way down to, uh, to variants which are just M55, U55. So it's a great example of a partner who's taken lots of our IP and built an entire product portfolio and platform around it which allows customers to easily scale from, from low-end uh, edge AI all the way up to, to higher-end edge AI on the same, on the same platform. Uh, do you launch new chips here at the show? Uh, w well, one of, the, one of the things that we recently announced was our, um, was our Cortex um, uh, M85, and actually it's not at our booth, but, but at the Renaissance booth there is a, a Cortex M8, M85 uh, product that, that, that's being shown up. So that's like even a step up in, that, in that's our, you know I like to call that the king of the Cortex M product line. Uh, it's got, uh, you know, it's our, it's our highest performing M class device. It's also got um, ML acceleration right on, right on the, uh, the CPU. And what's the, what's the ethos? Ethos is an, our NPU-based product, so it's an NPU IP that... that the some, new gen of this. Um, it's how you brand it, right? Yeah, well, at, there, are, there are multiple uh, NPUs. We've got the, um, the Ethos U55 and the Ethos U65. Those are separate IPs from the Cortex-M product line. So they are, they are, if you need added acceleration, you might add one of those IPs alongside of it. Nice. Uh, is it possible to see something over there in that corner? Should we have a quick look? Sure. Yeah? Okay. Let's go check it out. It says intelligence at the edge, and what's on the other side of that? Over here, we're talking a little bit about functional safety. Actually, Reinhard, you want to uh, you want to jump in here? <laughs> well, I can I can yeah. add to that. Uh, please, so please hold the microphone. This is this okay. is this is Reinhard. Yeah. Let, let, let me let me put this aside. So, hello, I'm Reinhard yeah. Keil. I'm a responsible director yeah. for embedded technology. Can you hold it a little bit higher? Yeah. A little higher. So, yeah. should I repeat it? No, that's good. No. No. Okay, so on this booth we show functional safety and uh, functional safety in ARM is a holistic thing. So we have it actually starting in the processor IP up to the tools, up to runtime systems. Um, uh, specifically we show the FUSA RTS on this stand which is uh, optimized for the Cortex-M processor portfolio and gives you the functional safety island uh, to split applications into a functional critical part and a not safety critical part. Um, also, we show on this booth the latest Cortex M85 technology where you can get um, massive gains. So we have is it here. On one of these boards? Yeah, this is here on this board. This is showing a graphics demo with a Cortex M85. Um, and in graphics, we use here in this case the Helium instruction set that is new on the Cortex M55 and 85 processors and gives uh, speed improvements for graphics up to factor 3. For DSP and machine learning, even more. Machine learning, for example, factor 15. And when you combine it with an ETHOS U, you can get factor 400. Um, so, this is a big deal? to have all this extra performance? That's a big deal because we have machine learning on the edge. 
which is important to offload internet traffic. Yeah, today's uh, devices frequently send data to the, to the networks. And with machine learning on the edge, you can actually reduce the internet traffic drastically because then all the compute happens on the edge device. All right, cool. Thanks a lot. Okay. Cool. I hand over to Mohamed again. Thanks, Reinhard. And um, so it's a great show for you? It's been great so far. You know, we've been we've been back to back with a lot of traffic in the booth, a lot of great sessions yesterday. We're just getting going here on day two and uh, we're expecting to have another great day today and, uh, and into tomorrow. Nice. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Cool.